You've all heard of comfort food, the kind of food you like to eat regardless of its nutritional value, but it just makes you feel good. Did you know movies operate the same way? That's right, we're going to talk about the movies that we like regardless of critical praise, box office totals, and overall audience reception. These are the movies we love for being what they are, why they are, and how they are. These are our comfort flicks. Gentlemen. No, get that snack later. You listen to me. Lock your doors. What are you talking about? I am talking about house guests from hell. We're here. You wouldn't happen to have any good scotch, would you? Then, one day... You touch me, I sue you. Mark and Jesse snapped. <laughs> Madhouse. Well, with the current state of affairs right now, you know, ha we all have forgotten the concept of having house guests. There is one film that we love here on Comfort Flicks that might act as a nice little reminder as to why that may not be a good thing. The film in question is Madhouse. It came out in 1990, directed by uh, Tom Ropolowski, and it was and it starred John Larroquette and Kirstie Alley. The film talks about Mark and Jesse Bannister. I guess you describe them as, you know, self-made couple. They they don't have kids. They're very career-oriented, but they're, like, very happy about that. Mm -hmm. And they just bought their first house. And, and a they're... gorgeous house. I think it's it's yeah. kind of like the Maitlands from Beetlejuice, but not yuppies and not obsessed with the house. Uh, they clearly like it. They're like, yay, we moved out of an apartment into a house. We're happy. Reasonably so. You're just like, oh, okay, they're happy they have a, a nice house. That's well, right when they get settled, yeah. they end up getting a message from John Larroquette's uh, cousin, cousin in New Jersey. A letter. A letter. In the mail. Yeah. A <laughs> not a phone call. Not a pit. Not a text. Pay, no text. No text. No fax. No it is a stamped envelope letter that they got. And uh, they also, because you just move, you have the issue of mail coming and taking over. Being forwarded well, over, so... they so. got the letter late because there was the issue with <laughs> transferring of your mail from your old address. So he finds out that his cousin is and his wife are coming in for vacation for five days, but they're arriving today. And they are going to stay with them. Yeah. They kind of invited themselves, basically. Pretty much invited themselves without any kind of uh, RSVP or anything like that. So that's bad enough because unfortunately when the cousin arrives, the cousin's kind of a wreck and his wife, uh, Bernice, played by Jessica Lundy, is a... Uh, oh, New Jersey. Yeah, from Joy Jersey. Z. We are not insane. We are from New Jersey. His cousin is a good person and they did have a good comp camaraderie as kids mm -hmm. and all, so he felt obligated to say yes you can. Well, what, right when they're due to leave, all of a sudden in comes more house guests. You have uh, Kirstie Alley's gold digging sister and her son yeah. the movie actually starts with day one and just as things progress situations happen weird shenanigans not completely unreasonable it's just more of a you know a chain of events situation yeah. where it ends by day 50. day 50 is where it all hits mm. ahead but it does involve family it involves neighbors it involves <laughs> People who just kind of invite themselves over. <laughs> and that idea of when people come over and they stay for an extended period of time, they start taking over your house. Yeah. In fact, John Larroquette actually makes a very apt uh, comparison to what happens when you put too many rats in one confined environment. Actually, this movie I love because in comedic terms, this is representative of what I like to call the snowball escalation. One that John Cleese mastered so well in Faulty Towers. When it starts off with something simple, something that seems to be controllable, but through some very outrageous circumstances, it just escalates and it gets worse and worse and worse to the point where by day 49, we have SWAT teams, elephants, we have uh, friggin' lawn that says fuck you and cocaine. It's, yeah, it's gone all the way to drug lord level. Yeah. One aspect of the movie that is truly okay, that's out there, but it's probably the best joke of the entire film. Oh, yeah. It's, and that is. And yeah, it all leads to the second greatest cat in yeah. film. The first, of course, being. Get the bad guy! Get the bad guy! Get the bad guy! Come on, Clovis! As much as John Lorquette and Christy Alley are the stars, the true star is. Scruffy Bannister the cat. Yeah, it's a mischievous cat. Loves to get into all it's kinds of trouble. It's a of a cat at first. But he also has 
he proves that the nine lives is a literal <laughs> thing where he dies many times. A lot of people say don't kill the animal. Well, in this case, they, they kill this one well, cat. Well, this cat dies so many times, but they keep getting more and more entertaining deaths. I, I think I just ran over your cat. There's the explosion. Yeah. There's but then the, there's one, however, the final death. Not the final, but like... The, the final one you see the on screen. The final one you see on screen is probably the funniest thing you'll ever see on television when it comes to a cat. And the thing is, is they've set up the joke that this cat keeps coming back. Yeah. And you know it's not at number nine yet. So when this happens, you know what the payoff will be, is that this cat's not going to stay dead. It's a beautiful but payoff. But it does actually cause, again, a snowball effect of the next thing happening when this cat <laughs> <It's>... dies. <laughs> but the cat is hilarious, especially when it's a very ugly puppet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a... There... I mean, you thought Salem Cat from Sabrina was an ugly puppet? No, man, the puppet they use for this cat sometimes is horribly ugly. Very early on when you meet the cat, they're trapped in traffic, and the cat... Uh, ends up puking in the car. Now, normally vomit humor doesn't work for me, but... But this is like a, a fire hose. Yeah, this is know? a this fire is, hose. Like, the cat's being held up and it's shooting everywhere. <laughs> and it's like, not normal. That's just not normal, but it's so funny. It was because, Team America level yeah, it pressure. Was, yeah, like the pressure out of this cat was <laughs> impressive. The cat makes it entertaining because you just kind of wonder where this is going. It is a big payoff. Yeah. The whole thing is actually a giant plot device. For a payoff at the very end. We should probably okay, talk about the real characters, yeah. The real characters, yeah. yeah. Following on would be all for not if our two main characters were not great, but fortunately, <laughs> John Larroquette and Kirstie Alley, even if you just said it's John Larroquette and Kirstie Alley, their chemistry is insanely good. I mean, oh, you feel for them. Yeah. we kind of put this on this, we like to put this on the same page as Undercover Blues, really, in a lot I, of I respects. I think that they're a perfect couple, but a different kind. Like, they're flirty with each other, but ju they're also, like, antagonistic at the same time. Mm -hmm. Not against each other, but more like they bind together to fight the antagonists. Yeah. But not in a casual way, like, it's no big deal. No, it is a big deal for them. Mm -hmm. And when they're low, they're kind of mutually low. <laughs> it's kind of almost, it's really entertaining when they lose it and they, they lose it, both of them. I won't lie. They kind of mutually lose it together, but they like stay together. Kirstie Alley is probably one of the best freakouts in history oh, she, on, her mean, news, on her news station. I think She's just it's, like. It's right below network. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, network's up here. You know, that's the best freakout in the news program. Hers is right below it. Right below it. Listen to me. Lock your doors. Don't answer the phone. Yeah, let's see. Social unrest. House guests. They're animals. They're cockroaches. You're kind of like, no, I hear you. Because you're you're on their side the whole time. Even mm -hmm. when they have to go to extreme lengths, you're on their side. Yeah. Because you're just like, get these people out. And all the, all the comeuppance, all the people who are kind of jerks, or everyone gets what they deserve. Oh, everybody. Like, everyone. I mean, the only one you get a little eye-rolly with, but it's fine, is the sister. Oh, who, yeah. I, who, I don't know who that actress is, but they found some. Oh. She looks just like she would be Christy Alley's sister. Like, that's some of the best casting I've yeah, ever um, seen. Yeah, there's actually not that much trivia on this film, which is really a shame. But uh, one thing I will say, Alison Aplaca, who played Claudia, okay. uh, John Larroquette, sometime after this, got his own sitcom, The John Larroquette Show. She wound up playing the lead female in oh. that show. That's cool. So, no, it was insanely... I, I remember okay. when I saw an episode of that show, I was like, oh my god, it's Claudia, but you're retaining John Larroquette. It's one of those situations where I was like... No, she really does sell that that's her sister. Like, mm -hmm. you could look at her and go, they're still related, even though they're not. Yeah, there's one bit where uh, Bernice, the New Jersey uh, wife, points out that both Kirstie Alley and Alice, Claudia and Jesse oh, both yeah. have the same nose. And you you leave to wonder if, in order to enforce that joke, they may have had to cast accordingly. I don't know. Because mm -hmm. uh, she, of course, is saying, oh, you're from L.A. You've had work done. Like, yeah, not with the chop shop. Yeah, and because I was like, you fucking bitch. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I am shocked that they kept them in the house that long. Yeah. Because I would have been, like, gang coming in. Like, <laughs> I, I'm like, you're way nicer than me. Yeah. And, and there's, like, the neighbors who, their situation, why mm. they move in, they're basically forced upon and use guilt. Oh, due to big guilt. accidents that happen that's not really anyone's fault. It's just, actually, I blame the neighbors. I think they caused the problem. Yeah. But they shame the, them and force them to move in, and then... It's a single father, and... Uh, he is absolutely, you know, I don't want, I guess you could say negligent towards his kids. I mean, you got one daughter who's a phone whore, which you got to bear in mind, in the 90s, with no cell phones, you had only this landlines. This cordless phone, man. The cord's still there. Yeah, the cord's still there, and this girl is just dominating the phone. Meanwhile, you've got his son named CK, who is a, yeah, full-blown sociopath, who, the first time you see this kid, he is 
using the table saw to saw off the head off a Ken doll. And the dad just brushed it off like going, CK, how many times have I told you not to play with dolls? Not the best neighbors, like you would just not want them in your house ever. And they're just as bad and very selfish people. Extremely. The funniest thing is the cousin who leaves the story at one point. Um, when he comes back though, as a child, when I watched this movie, I didn't know that was him. Let's yeah. Just say, Credit to the actor, I believe, John Deal is his name. He yeah, he transforms like, yeah. everything. And Big, I was like... Long ponytail, which I'm like, man, you grew that ponytail out real good in, 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 in 45 15, days. 45 days. Yeah, and uh, and this, uh, like, wicked handlebar mustache he had going on. Well, also, on. he also changes as a person. Like, he yeah. Up. But that's, like, another evolution. All the characters do... In ways evolve. All the characters that demand some your way. focus yeah. evolve, and some don't. Some some you know will one day evolve. <laughs> a lot of them are left in a position where you actually get the vibe that some of them will definitely be better off. Because you're with Mark and Jesse throughout the entire uh, run, you there is such a wonderful level of catharsis when you get to the finale when both of them team up together to kick them all out. It is so beautiful. Time to clean house. Because all there, yes. Yeah. And it's it's <laughs> not overly elaborate, but it's so it feels good. It's so good. And you can feel they are at the limit, they are done. And the thing <laughs> is, that that point before that, they are kinda like, we give up, we're out, we're done. Yep. And one thing gets dropped on them that basically was what started the whole problem, the worst thing mm -hmm. that started the whole line of issues, and they realized they could have avoided all of this. If, if they had just been informed properly. Yeah. And when they found that out, they were like, oh, okay, nope. game over, time, <laughs> time to go. And it's, it feels so good to watch them finally just throw down. I mean, it's like, and they have fun. They have fun yes. doing it, too. You see the look of glee on their faces. And again, this is all because John Larroquette and Kirstie Alley had such good chemistry. They, they were so good. That when, they, that when they both are in this mutual state of psychotic glee, I mean, this is Joker and Harley Quinn level like excited chaos kind I of thing. I almost would say, yeah, that's like a non-toxic <laughs> version of Harley and Yeah, Joker. where, <laughs> I that's... mean, they. this is a house they love, but they have no problem taking a lawn chair and launching it through the freaking glass. Well, yeah, at that point, they just had no fucks to give. <laughs> no fucks to give, but it's, and it's beautiful. It's wonderful. And it, just, They're terror. It, it's so entertaining. It's, Terrorizing children, threatening people with yeah, a circle saw. Yeah, you don't feel bad about it because you're like, no, I'd do no. it too. I mean, you are like... <laughs> you get them, you know, and they make it count. And yeah. the film is actually very short. Extremely. They do not waste time. They do not... It moves quickly mm -hmm. and briskly. I guess when you whittle down the core success of the film, I think the thing that makes it so memorable, I guess in the it can all be accredited to the two leads, but I think it's just also because it's a situation that it starts relatable, just having the relatable yeah. thing of just having obnoxious house guests, but then I guess because the way it escalates and it gets so absurd, mm -hmm. how much worse can this get? And then you're like, and you think when it hits one point, it's like, okay, this can't possibly get, oh my God, it's actually getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah, it's just, a, it's, it's, I'd say, yeah, it's a screwball comedy, but in the sense of a very relatable topic, which is house guests. Like mm -hmm. my parents always told me, you want your guests to leave when you feel sad that they're leaving because you're at that point that you're not sick and tired of them being there. And I've had times in the past where some guests maybe were in the house and I was kind of like, oh my God, you're leaving. Even a day you know? too long, and you they're know, just it's like. Just a day too and it's not no hate to the person themselves, it's just they're in your space, you're having to take care of them or keep them busy and stuff, and just the stress gets to you. Hmm. Now, normally it's not your house being destroyed, but you know, this is an exaggerated variation yeah. of it. I mean, when the time comes when they personally take it upon themselves to remodel your house or blow up the kitchen for the sake of killing a cat just to see if it'll come back again. Yeah. Yeah, or telling you to mail their piss to New Jersey to check the ovum count. Or, t or take over your, your bedroom because they refuse to sleep on a... Uh, on a... Uh, fold out. Fold out. Idea is relatable. Exactly. If you are, have a home, doesn't even matter, you don't have to even be married or have kids or anything, and you have people over... You, there is that point where you're just like, get out of my house. <laughs> exactly. Just get out. And, and so when you have all that in mind, when you get to the final resolution of it all, you are not against them at all. You are just going, yeah, just do it. Just get these assholes out. This movie currently, and granted it's only five reviews, but it only holds like a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I, even then, I'm still going to say no. The critics like Paul Blart. 
Like, yes, th yeah, I'm sorry. Or anything by Sam Sandler. Or, yeah, there are people in this world who like Adam Sandler. And honestly, for worse reasons why than why we love Madhouse. Madhouse ha is a premise that, frankly, everyone can get behind because we've all had that situation where we've had people live, staying it's in our just, house. Where it's... And also, personally, I kind of like it because it's from 1990s. You're seeing stuff that we don't have anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, someone mailing a letter to tell them, hey, I'm coming to visit. <laughs> then waiting at the gate when they come off the plane. Yeah. I miss. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that in. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Miller. Whoever heard of oh him my anymore? God, look yeah. The mullet from yeah, Dennis wow. Miller and a fashionable mullet. He, he was one of the few people in the nineties who could rock a mullet. Uh, but using travelers checks. Using travelers checks. Like there's just stuff in there that's kind of like, and this was nineteen ninety, so this is like kind of yeah. nineties. You're just like, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this thirty years ago. Yay. And yet the film still retains the timeless edge because unfortunately we can. This situation can still happen where that where. Yeah. No, we'll have obnoxious house guests. Yeah, I mean, yeah. some modifications. Uh, there is a, a comment where the, the boy tells John Arcadio, oh, touch me and I'll sue you. He goes, He's like, I got a lawyer on retainer. That was Dan Fielding showing yeah, his... Yeah, that was, that was pure Dan John Arcadio, Dan Fielding, Night Court. Yeah, that was, they referenced several times, like, oh, we'll sue you and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I remember the 90s. That's what everyone would say. I'm going to sue you. But in reality, it's yeah. like, yeah, if you know the legal... Actually, yeah, you no, know, you couldn't do it. And I, I can, see, and I can see how people would be re reluctant towards the characters of Mark and Jesse because you know they are well to do. I mean, you see them in a very good place. But the thing is, you can tell that they worked to get to where they are, and they worked hard to achieve this point. And they're so, still working hard. Yeah, and they're still working for it, and they're actually at a very crucial point in both of their respective careers. And you see that these are people who were given this stuff on the silver platter. They actually worked for it. So it is kind of crushing to see. See, Everything they work for getting destroyed by people who don't care. And there's some really great scenes where the two of them are actually just... Well, there's a great one in the closet where, you know, they're actually lamenting that Bernice is just sullying, you know, the room that they barely got a chance to enjoy. Kind of the idea, like, especially if you're self-made individuals, and, I mean, they don't have kids, which kind of hints that maybe that was going to happen eventually, uh, that is never brought up except for a slight made against Ooh, Christy it, Alley by... Again, we won't we won't spoil Let's just that, say but she makes a, it's the thing that sets everything off. At the, that at basically the, is the oh, you should said that <laughs> we just bought a house. Maybe that's the next step, you know. Give us we're yeah. working on that, you know, and everything gets kind of just taken away immediately. Yeah, which ultimately does lead you to the very essential moral of this movie is if you yourself are a house guest, don't be an asshole. Yeah? Like, yeah. honestly, if they just weren't assholes, none of the problems would have happened. The film is incredibly obscure. You'll probably note that I wasn't able to snag a lot of footage for this one because of its obscurity. Uh, however, fortunately, it is available on a lot of streaming services. I found out it was on Vudu. Uh, I was able to land, grab it on uh, Blu-ray. So there are ways to see this movie. And frankly, I think it's one that deserves an audience, especially if you loved... Uh, these actors during their heyday, during their comedic heydays with Night Court, with Cheers. I do yeah. definitely say that's a must. And the story is timeless. The story works, still works to this day. And the premise, especially in comedic terms, is one that everyone can get behind. So definitely seek this one out. I'd ask if you agree or disagree, but again, given the obscurity, you're not sure yet. So just seek this movie. Shot. Yeah, please. Uh, give it a shot. Part of the reason we're making this video is to extend the awareness of it. So here you go. Madhouse, it's yours. If we have a nuclear war, the only living thing to survive will be house!